Welcome to the John Gets Games tutorial for 1930. In this video, I'll be teaching you the rules to the game as it's being played, and I will be showing you the first one third of the game. Now, before we go into that, I would like to ask that if you enjoy this video, that you please click the like button for it down below, as well as the subscribe button for the channel. In addition to that, if you'd like to directly support the channel and get access to a ton of exclusive content, then please go to patreon.com slash John Gets Games. Some of those exclusives include my dozens of opinions episodes, where I've talked about my likes and dislikes for hundreds of games, also, you can gain access to some videos early and advertisement free and get access to an exclusive podcast feed where you can hear audio versions of all of my vlogs, including those opinions episodes. Now, coming back to this game, I do want to ask that if while you're watching this, some part of it jumps out to you as particularly interesting, then please comment about that down below because I'd love to see that kind of feedback. All right, let's jump into the game. Out here, we have the game fully set up and ready to play for our four different players. Now, before I start, I would like to ask that you please turn on the Klingon subtitles because I might make mistakes as I'm showing you the game, and those will let me put corrections on the screen where you should be able to see them, and I will also put corrections below this video in the top comment. Well, let's start things off with a brief overview of the game. It is set in the year 1930, and specifically in the early stages of aviation. In this game, the players take on the role of the investors, promoters, and presidents of the up to 10 different airlines that come in the game. In a four-player game, we'll be seeing eight of those 10 different airlines. Now, the goal of the game is to make as much money as possible, and we will be doing this by purchasing the stocks in these companies. And then during the operation rounds, we're going to use these stocks to perform a variety of different actions. By use the stock, I mean literally you take that stock token and you move it over here and then perform an action for that specific airline company. So if I had this yellow airline company and I placed this here and I did an action, I would have to affect that company with the action. So this means your stock portfolio is also your action portfolio, dictating which companies you can perform actions for as the game goes on. Now there are seven different actions, and the main ones involve expanding out onto the map, which involves placing new gates down, which increases the income of the airline. Uh, another one is increasing your technology. This is important because the further you go down here, the farther that airline company can fly to, enabling access to more lucrative cities, and opening up the possibility of upgrading airports in these cities, bringing up the technology level of the entire airport. This increases the income for every airline that has a gate in that airport. So it's possible that you could increase the technology to be able to upgrade various cities, allowing less technologically advanced companies to also reap those rewards. Now, probably the most significant action in the game is fly. The way this works is once per round, a player can fly an airline that they have a stock in and that has not flown already, and then the income level of that airline will dictate the possible dividend payout to all of the players who are invested in that airline. Now, when this happens, the CEO of that airline, which could be a different player, gets to decide if it's going to be a full payout or a half payout, which means players will only get half the money that they could have, but the airline can gain a technology increase or new gates that go from the reserve back into the supply. And in fact, the CEO can say there is no dividend and instead they'll prioritize on getting gates and increasing technology for that company. Now, again, this is a very important action because it's the primary way that players will gain more money throughout the game. Once the game is over, players are going to liquidate all of their stocks for the current stock price. So it is certainly important to have a great portfolio by that point. Now, speaking of the end of the game, that is going to happen once six full turns have elapsed, and within each turn, we are going to have a stock phase and an operation phase, and in the stock phase, that's where we buy more stocks, and in the operation phase, that's where we actually use those stocks to perform all of these actions. Once the six rounds are up, as I said, players liquidate all of their stocks for their current stock value only after one full dividend flight, and then the player with the most money will be the winner. Now, I know this was a very high-level overview of the game, and don't worry, I'll explain how all of these things work in detail while we are playing, and on that note, it's now time to start the game. For today's tutorial, we are going to play as the brown player, and we can now begin the game with the initial stock phase. Now, as I mentioned, each of the turns has a stock phase and then an operating phase, but in the first turn, the stock phase is different from the stock phase in the following five turns. I'll explain how the standard stock phase works later on. For now, we start with the initial stock phase, and the way this works is mapped out here on this player order card. It says we are the first player and the first buyer. We also started with $20, and the first thing we do is we buy two shares of a stock of one airline. With that in mind, we can look over here to the stock market board, and we can see the reserve for all of the eight airlines in the game. 
what we have to do is choose one of these airlines and then pick a starting price for the stock. That price can be anywhere between three and seven, as long as we can afford to buy two of that stock. Again, we started the game with $20, so that won't be a problem. I think let's start the light blue pan airline. Now, again, we have to buy two stocks in this airline, and that means we have to pay twice the price that we choose. I think we'll start right here in the middle with a $5 stock price for the blue airline. And that means we are going to buy these two blue stocks for $5 each. Stock tokens get placed over here on the right side of our board. And again, we started with $20 and we just spent 10. So that means we have $10 remaining. And I do want to be clear that the money that we spent goes right back to the bank. Now it's time for the yellow player to go. And just like us, they have to buy two shares of stock of one airline. And specifically, that has to be an airline that has not been opened yet. They have $21 instead of the 20 that we started with. And they've decided to open the yellow airline at $6 a share. That means they will take these two yellow stocks and pay $12 to the bank. They had 21. And after paying for it, they go down to nine. After this, the blue player does the same thing that the rest of us have done so far, and they did start with $22. They're going to open the pink airline, and they've decided they're going to go for a $5 stock price, just like we did. So that means they have to pay $10, and of course, that will get them two of these pink airline stocks. Again, they had $22, which means now they're down to 12 Finally, we have the red player. They have $23, and they have to open an airline by purchasing two stock. Interestingly enough, even though they start with the most money, they are going to open the orange company for the lowest stock price. That is $4, which means they only have to pay $8. They, of course, get two orange stock. And then when they pay $8, it leaves them with a whopping $15 left. Red is done, which means it comes back to us. And now what we have to do is buy one share, not of our base company. As you can see, the company we bought into in the first turn of this initial stock phase becomes our base company. So we buy one share in not blue. When we do this, we can start a new airline if we want. We would simply set the initial stock price and only take one of the associated stock token from the supply. I just want to point out that in the supply, there were three stocks of each airline in the pool. In a four-player game, there are three more stocks off to the side in the reserve, and I'll explain how those come into play later on. For now, though, we can kind of splay these out to get a better idea of what stocks are available. Now, at this point, we have $10, and I am pretty tempted to just buy this orange for $4. That would leave us with $6 remaining, and with that money, we should be able to buy into another company without too much problem. I kind of like the idea of getting in on orange while it's really cheap, considering the red player has two of that company, and they're probably going to try to push it as much as they can. Yeah, let's go for it. We'll buy this for $4, which is going to bring us down to $6. Then yellow can buy a stock in not the yellow airline. They currently have $9, and they could open a new company if they wanted to, but for now, they've decided to simply buy this pink stock. That will cost them $5 which leaves them with $4 remaining. And now the blue player who has $12 has to buy a non-pink stock. They're going to buy into blue. That will cost them $5, which means they have $7 remaining. And now the red player has to buy a non-orange stock. They currently have $15, and they are more than happy to buy this yellow stock for $6. So this means they have $9 remaining. And now it's come back to us for the last time in the initial stock phase. And specifically, we have to buy one share of an airline we do not already have. We currently have $6, and that means we have to buy a share that isn't the orange or blue airline. When we look back over here, it seems we have to start a new company. All of the other companies that have been started have had their third stock purchased already. With $6, I think let's just spend all our money. Yeah, let's start the purple company at a stock price of 6 That means we'll take one purple stock and spend all of our remaining money. We have fully invested into these four stocks. Yellow is next. They have $4 and they cannot invest in yellow or pink. They've decided to start the teal company and yeah, they're gonna spend all of their money as well. They'll set it at four and then take one teal stock. So they also have no money. Now blue has to buy a stock and they can't buy pink or blue and they have $7. They're going to start the green airline at $7, which is the highest amount you can start with. That means they buy one stock for $7. And just like the rest of us, that will spend all of their money. Finally, we have the red player, and they are not going to spend all their money. They still have $9, and they can buy a stock that isn't orange or yellow. 
After considering their options, they're going to buy a purple for $6, which means they have $3 remaining. Now, I do want to point out that on each player's turn during the initial stock phase, if we had enough money to buy a stock, we were forced to do so. Now, that means depending on the stock prices that are set and the amount of money that we begin with, it's possible you might end this stock phase with less than four stocks, but that's only going to happen if you've bought some really expensive stocks and everybody is pricing quite high. In this case, everyone does have four stocks and the initial stock phase is done. We can get rid of these cards for the rest of the game because we were the first buyer. We also become the first player and now we can proceed from the initial stock phase into the first operation phase of the game now as i said in each round we're going to go through each of these steps the first three anyway this fourth one over here happens once the game is over and we will explain how the standard stock phases work once we get there at the start of the game's second turn for now, we're going to begin the first operation phase of the game, and as it says, up to seven operations per player are going to happen. Specifically, in player order, each player has to play one stock token to perform one action for that airline. So we're going to start with ourselves since we are the starting player, and that means we have to choose one of our stock tokens, and we're going to place it down here into any one of these used stock token spaces. As you can see, there are seven of these spaces total, and that is there to show that we can perform at most seven actions during each operation phase. Of course, we only have four stocks, and there is no way to get more stocks during the operation phase, so that means we are going to perform four actions, not seven. I do want to point out that we are forced to take actions with airlines if we have any actions that are possible. So let's now take our first turn, and I think we are going to use this blue airline stock. We are the CEO of that airline because we have the majority of these tokens. We have two stock compared to the one of the blue player in this blue company. So I think we want this company to do well since we are most invested in it. We'll put this token here, and now we're going to choose one of these actions to perform for the blue company. I think let's begin with research. Now, this can be done once per overall turn, and when we do this action, we increase the technology level of that company once. The technology track is down here, and this is the blue company. So we're gonna put that company right here, and as you can see, there is a stock plus one icon. This is there to show that when a company reaches that spot, their stock price increases by one. So the blue airline's stock price goes from five up to six. Then we also have to flip this technology token over to show that it has advanced once this round already. That is there to remind us that no one else can take a turn with the blue company to advance this again because this can only happen once per turn. There is a way to actually slide down this track without a research action, and I'll explain that in more detail when we talk about the fly action. For now, our research action is done, and that means our turn is done, so play will move clockwise over here to the yellow player, and just like us, they have to choose one stock and perform an action with the associated airline. After considering their options, they want to perform an action with the teal airline. The action they will do is expand, and that says they can place two airline gates on the board, but only one if this airline is still at the white technology level. As you can see, Teal is still at that white technology level, which means they can only expand one gate. This is the main reason we researched with the blue airline first, so that when we potentially expand, we can put two gates down instead of one. It looks like the yellow player decided they wanted to expand with Teal before any research happened there. So they're going to place a gate down, and they take this from the supply of that company. At the start of the game, every single company has five gates over here, and you can only expand if there are gates available to be placed out. If there are no gates over here, then the expand action can't be performed, and more gates will come out potentially during the fly action, which again, I'll talk about in more detail later on. So they can now expand, placing this gate down into an airport that does not already have a teal gate on it and that the teal airline can reach. Now, reaching a city depends on the overall technology level of that airline. When an airline is in the white level, they can only reach the United States. Once an airline reaches the yellow level, you can see that unlocks reaching Canada. There are four Canadian cities up here, and that means the Teal Airline cannot establish a gate into any of those because they do not have the prerequisite technology level. This also means you cannot establish a gate into South America until the technology is in this green section. Then there is the transoceanic section, and once your technology reaches this level here, you can establish a gate over in Amsterdam or Brussels, London, Paris, Rome, etc. 
Finally, there is the trans global technology level, and this unlocks flying directly to cities that aren't actually here in a four player game. They only show up in a six player game, as you can see, that's Doha, Johannesburg, and Sydney down here. But again, this is a four player game. Now, there is still reason to get up to this gray technology level, and that has to do with upgrading cities, and I'll explain how that works later on. So let's come back to the United States because that is the only area that the Teal Airline can currently reach because of their technology level. So they have to place into one of these and they are going to go over to Washington. Now, I do want to point out that in order to expand into a city, there must be an open gate and every city has four gate slots and there cannot be a gate of that airline already at the city. So we can see the Teal Airline started in Kansas City. That means they cannot establish a gate over there again. There is no Teal Gate at Washington yet. And obviously there's at least one open slot, so they can expand over here. And when you expand, you always put that token onto the leftmost open slot. Then the income for that airline is going to increase by the associated amount. This number here is the base income, and that means it is plus seven. And then because they are the first airline to establish a gate in Washington, they add three to that. So by placing this gate here, they've increased the Teal Airlines income by 10. The Teal Airline started out at eight and when they go up by 10 that brings it up to 18. That seems like a pretty big jump and it is but I do want to point out that the overall dividend payout increase is only going to happen when you go from one of these colored sections to a new colored section essentially every 25 income bump. So by going up 10 on this track they have not actually changed the overall dividend amount and again I'll explain how that works when we discuss the fly action. All right yellow is done which means the blue player can go. They've decided they're going to do a similar to start to what we did. They're going to use their pink stock and research with it. So that increases their tech to the yellow step, which does increase the stock price by one, which means it is also at six. That's a pretty popular price right now. This token can be flipped over. And now it's time for the red player to go. They're going to research with purple. That brings it into the yellow area and increases that stock price to seven. After that, we get to go again, and of course we have to choose one of these stock tokens here. I think let's go with blue again. This time, let's expand. Because the blue airline is not at the white tech level, that means we can expand by putting two gates down. And because we are in the yellow tech area, that means we can expand to Canada if we want. As you can see, these four up here are Canadian cities that we can go into. And yeah, we're going to put two of these gates down and we have a huge variety of options available to us. On the one hand, putting these down to get the biggest income for the blue company does make sense. So that would draw our attention to places like Boston, which would be six plus three or nine. It would be 10 if we put one of these in Montreal, which is also great. But in addition to that, we also have to consider these private contract cards that we got at the start of the game. As you can see, we have a one, two, three, four, and five dollar card, and that's because we specifically got a random one of each of these types at the beginning of the game. Now, near the end of each of the turns, we will each have the possibility of turning in one or more of these as long as there is an airline that has gates in all of the cities that show up on these cards. So with that in mind, if we made sure that the blue company that starts in New York is also in Washington and Denver, then not only will that increase the stock value of the blue company, but it will also pay out $1 to us as a personal benefit. Uh, that means we could actually cash these out for airlines that we don't even have stocks in. That'll increase that stock price, which isn't great, but we would still get the personal payout. So these will help guide our decisions. But I think at the moment, we might still just want to make the income as big as possible for Blue in order to get as much bang for our buck right here at the start. Maybe let's split the difference. We'll put one of these in Washington. So we just need to go to Denver to satisfy this. That one also wants Denver and New York, but also wants Dallas. So we are partially there. We could put this into Denver and then cash this out for $1 later on or go up here to Montreal. I think. I can't say no to this huge income. Yeah, we're going to go here. So that's going to be seven plus three and then another seven plus zero. So all told, that is 17 income that we just got for the blue company. Blue was at 10. So we add 17 to that, bringing this to 27. And as you can see, by going to this spot, we've crossed into a new colored area on the income track. Specifically, we reached and passed the 26 mark. That has two different icons on it. And let's take a closer look at it. The first of these is a hub icon and the second is a stock icon. 
What this means is we take a stock from the reserve of this company and put it into the stock token pool. In this way, as the income for the airlines increases, more stocks come into the system. There was also a hub icon, and that means we can take one of these hubs and place it up here near these gates, and that is going to unlock the hub action for the blue company. And I'll talk about how that works later on when I have the opportunity to do it. When we focus back on the income track, you can see that when a company's income reaches or exceeds 51, that will bring in another stock token. And then when it reaches 76, that brings in the second hub token. And finally, when it reaches or exceeds 100, the last hub and stock token are added into the supplies. And you add one to the overall stock value each time the income reaches a set of 100. So, as you can see, increasing this income brings more and more options online for these different companies. Well, we are done with our turn, so that means yellow can go. And they are going to research with the yellow airline. That brings it up to the yellow level, which is going to increase their stock price by one, and it means the yellow airline can reach Canada. So, that stock price goes up to seven. And now the blue player can go. They have decided they are going to use their blue stock to place two of these gates down. One is going to go into Chicago and the other one's going into San Diego. Now, clearly they could have done something to increase the income more than this. So it seems they are probably targeting one or more of their private contract cards. Either way, these are the decisions they went with. That is going to be seven plus zero plus three plus two. All told, that's 12 more income for the blue airline, which brings it up to 39. Things are looking great for the blue airline. Okay, they are done. And now the red player is going to research with the orange airline. That is going to bring it into the yellow area, which increases its stock price by one. So it goes up to five. All right, it's our turn again. And as much as I'd like to do more actions for the blue airline, we are out of blue stock to activate those actions. So it's time to do something with these over here. The red player did just increase the research for the orange airline. So that means the orange airline could place two gates down. Increasing the income for orange helps the red player more than us, but it does still help us. Also, we could do something with the purple airline. There are only two of these out. And actually, yeah, I think that's what we're going to do. And we're going to perform the first fly action of the game. When we focus in, it says the CEO of this airline is going to choose a reward. And if there is no CEO, then we use the provided chart. And this can be done once per turn. Now, the CEO of a company is a player who has more stocks of that company than anyone else. If there's a tie for the most, then no one is the CEO. The purple airline is flying, and there are two stocks out for purple total. We have one, and red has one. That means we have a tie, and that means no player is a CEO. With this in mind, let's focus on our board a little bit more, specifically to the CEO flight choices area. Now, if a player was the CEO, then they would get to choose which of these five options would happen with the fly action. Now, again, that could be the player who isn't performing this action. If somebody else was the CEO, but we decided to fly with purple, then on our turn, the purple airline CEO would make this decision. Of course, I just ascertained that there is no CEO for purple. There is a tie. So in that case, we look to this table instead. Now, the way this works is we start at the top and we go down and we stop as soon as we find a condition that meets the purple airline airline situation. So we start with the top option, and that says if the airline has no airline gates available, then that airline would increase its number of available gates by six and would take zero dividends. We can look up here and see that the purple airline has five gates available, so that is not the case. Once again, if there were none up here, then the no CEO logic would say that right now no funds would be given out but six more gates would come in from the reserve, allowing the purple company a lot more options to increase their income by constructing these gates. You may have noticed before that when we expanded these gates onto the board, no money was actually spent. To a certain degree, the scarcity of these gates is effectively like the treasury for these airlines. Of course, that is not the case though, because the purple airline currently has five gates available. So we can move down to the second option. If the airline has one gate available, then if available, it increases its airline gate amount by three and it performs a half dividend. Obviously, that's not the case either because remember, the purple airline has five gates available, which is more than one. So we move to the third line and it says, if this airline is three or more tech levels behind the most advanced airline, then purple would take half dividends and increase the tech level of the purple airline by one. 
Purple is actually tied for being the most advanced, so that is not the case. But I do want to specify that if this was the case, the purple token would advance forward and it would not flip over. So if it was already flipped, it would stay that way. And if it wasn't flipped, it would move and not flip. And this is the way that an airline can get a potential two technology bumps within a given turn once for the research action that can be done once per turn, and then once if it gets advanced during a fly action. Once again, that's not going to happen here, though. Which means we've reached the fourth and final option, which says the purple airline will pay out full dividends. With that in mind, we can look down on our player board to the dividend level payout. Now, specifically, depending on the income level of the airline, an associated amount of money is going to be paid to the players for every stock in that airline that they have. The purple airline is at 8, which was the income it started the game with, which means it is between 1 and 25, and that means the full payout will pay $2 per share to the players who own purple stock. Now, I mentioned a couple of options which could have done half payouts. You can see each of these payout options is evenly divisible by 2. So in that case, you just pay half of the amount. Another easy way to visualize this chart is the fact that in each of these different colored sections on the track, the dividend payout will increase. The full payout is 2, 4, 6, 8. Then once you go over 100, it'll be 10, 12, 14, 16, and it caps out at there. If the airline income goes above 200, it stays at $16 per share with a full dividend payout. Once again, a full payout is happening for the Purple Airline. It's in this first section, which is going to be $2 per share, and we have one share. So we are going to gain $2 from the bank, and then the red player also has a share. So they too get $2 from the bank. The last thing that we have to do is flip the income marker to the flown side. We simply do that by flipping this over and it says flown on the backside. And this is there to show that the purple airline has flown this turn. Each airline can fly a maximum of once per overall turn. And this has been flipped to show that. We can still increase the income of the airline, but of course we won't reap any dividend benefits from that until that airline flies again during a future turn. All right, we are done, which means the yellow player can go. And they are going to expand with the yellow airline. The yellow airline is at the yellow technology level. That means they could expand up to Canada if they wanted. But it appears the yellow player actually wants to expand into Los Angeles, which is going to add 6 plus 0 income. And then New Orleans, that is going to be 3 plus 5 or 8. So 8 plus 6 is going to increase the income by 14 for the yellow airline. Yellow was at 10, so that brings them up to 24, not quite enough to bring out another stock and a hub token. The yellow player is done, which means blue can go. And they've decided to activate this green stock. It's the only stock in the green company currently owned, and they're just going to fly with it. This fly action is the first and only action the green company will be taking during this operation phase. As I said, the blue player owns the only green stock, which means they have a majority, which makes them the CEO. That means they get to choose one of these five options for this flight action. The first thing they can do is take full dividends. We saw that earlier when the purple airline flew. The next option says they could take half dividend and increase the tech level by one. The third option says they could take half dividends and increase the number of gates the green company has by three. The fourth option increases the gates by three and increases the tech by one, but pays out zero dividend to the blue player. And lastly, they could pay out zero dividends to increase the number of gates by six. Now, every airline starts the game with six gates in the reserve. So if they did this, then they would not have to bring out any more gates for the rest of the game, at least for the green company. Now, the blue player has decided that they're going to go for the fourth option that will increase the number of gates by three and increase the technology by one. And the reason they're doing this is because the green company currently has an income level of six. That means the full payout would give them $2 and a half payout would give them $1. They really want to increase the tech level of the green company to try and make it compete better, even though no one else has really invested in the company yet. And they figured if they did that and did a half pay, they would get $1 and they would rather have the blue company get these three extra gates for the future instead of that one single dollar. Now, $1 can be very important in the early stages of the game, but the blue player is essentially investing in the green company by not taking any money out. So three gates can be taken from the reserve and they'll be added into the green airlines supply, which means it has eight gates to choose from. That is certainly going to be enough for quite some time. The green airlines technology will also increase and this does not flip over. That means if somebody else had a green stock, they could do a research action to move this again in this turn. Of course, no one does. And that's part of the reason why the blue player decided to invest in the company, getting that technology up without spending a specific action for it. 
That has finished their action, so they can flip this over. And I do want to state another reason why they decided to do that. Specifically, that has to do with the stock market. When we look over here, we can see in the bottom left corner, there is a variety of different stock market manipulations that can happen during different phases of the game. When we focus in even more, the bottom one says during the end of turn adjustment, if an airline did not perform a fly action, its stock price goes down by one. So this is the main reason the blue player decided to do this. They did not want the stock price to go down once for this company that they have already invested in. The fact that they were able to prevent this penalty while also increasing the technology and the future sustainability of that company by having more gates to put down just seemed like a good idea for the blue player. Perhaps they could have not taken those extra gates and gained the one money, but again, they figured this investment was worth it. Well, the blue player is done, which means red gets to go. And they've decided they are going to fly with the yellow airline. They currently have one yellow stock, but over here, the yellow player has two yellow airline stock. That means they have a majority, which makes the yellow player the CEO. So even though it is currently the red player's turn, the yellow player gets to decide which of these options is going to happen with this flight. After considering it, they are going to go with the half dividend increase tech by one. The yellow airline is currently in the two full dividend section. A half dividend means $1 is going to be paid out for each of those stocks. Now, of course, they are going to increase the technology level for the yellow airline, putting it above the rest of these companies on the track. There's no inherent benefit to that specifically, but it is good to be high on this technology track, which means you can more speedily gain access to further and more lucrative sections of the board. Now the payout happens. Again, it's a half payout, so $1 per yellow stock will go to the players. This means yellow is going to gain $2, and the red player will gain $1. Lastly, we can flip this over to show that the yellow airline has flown. And now it's time for us to go again. And we have just one action left. That means we must choose this. And specifically, I do want to point out again that if you have a legal action to do, then you must perform one of those. When we focus in on the action options, the last one is called stand. It says do nothing. So as an action, you can do nothing. But again, this may be challenged. And that means if another player sees a legal action that you could do with that company, then you are forced to do an action. If there are multiple, then you get to choose which of those actions you do. But if there are no legal actions that you can do with a company, then nothing happens except for the fact that the stock value for that company goes down by one. Of course, that's not the case. There's lots of things that we could do with the Orange Airline. Up to this point, we've talked about some of these actions, but we haven't actually covered relocation, upgrading, open, or hub yet. And don't worry, I'll get to those by the end of the tutorial. I think for this Orange action, we are going to expand. Orange is at the yellow technology level. That means they can expand to Canada, anywhere in the United States as well, and they can put two of these gates down. At the moment, I'm not really seeing any good synergy to try and work towards for any of these contracts. We could work towards something like this, I guess, uh, with Chicago and San Francisco. San Francisco would be eight income, whereas Chicago would be seven. There's better options out here, although honestly, those are pretty good. This does require Santiago as well, and that is down in South America. So that would require two more tech level advancements for the Orange Company, which is going to happen sooner rather than later, most likely. Yeah, maybe we should just go for that. I think I've talked myself into it. Part of the reason for this is because we already have stocks in the blue company that is also in Chicago. That means in the future, when we start upgrading various cities, we have a nice synergy of our stocks. We could try to upgrade Chicago, bumping up multiple of our stocks in one go. I haven't described upgrading yet. And again, I'll get to that later. Now here we can see that the income has gone up by seven for Chicago, and then it goes up by five plus three or eight for San Francisco. This means the Orange Airlines income goes up by 15 total. And it is also just barely not getting to the next increased dividend section. All right, we are done with our final action of this operating phase. And now the yellow player goes. They have to perform an action with the pink airline. And they've decided to expand. The pink airline does have a technology level above white. That means they can put two gates down. And they're going to put one into Boston, which is going to be six plus three or nine. And because they are in the yellow technology area, they can head to Canada. And specifically, they're going to put a gate down in Toronto, which is another six plus three. That is going to be 18 income total for the pink airline, which means they go five, 10, 15, 16, 17, 18. So they have entered this new area that brings out a pink hub and another pink stock. The hub can go here. 
and the stock will go into the available pool. Yellow is done, so the blue player can go, and they must perform an action with the pink airline, and they have not flown yet. But it looks like the blue player isn't going to fly with this action. Now, that might seem wrong because, of course, if you don't fly with an airline, then not only do you not get the potential benefits of it, but the stock value is going to go down. However, there is a way to purchase an extra action during the end of turn phase, and it seems like the blue player might be relying on that for the flight. We'll talk about that later on, though. For now, with this action, they've decided to place a hub down onto the board. That means they're going to use this hub action option. And the way this works is pretty simple. You can only do the hub action if there is at least one hub in the supply for that company. And then you place this hub down into a city that has an empty hub icon next to it that also has a gate of that matching company. This is the pink company, and they have gates in Toronto, Boston, and Miami. Each of these also has an empty hub location. They're going to put this hub down into Miami. And then this counts essentially as an extra gate. Again, you cannot have multiple gates within a city, but having the hub is sort of like that. This represents the overall efficiency of the airline increasing as they centralize their logistics at a hub. So that means that the income for the pink airline is going to go up by this base amount. So by putting this here, they've increased the pink airline's income by six. I do want to point out that not every city has a hub location. Specifically, these only show up in the North American cities of the United States and Canada. So the pink airline's income goes up by six. And that did not get them to a new threshold, but the blue player felt like it made sense for them to spend a little bit money later on to buy another action to fly the pink company in order to squeeze in essentially another action, making the pink company better sooner rather than later. At any rate, they are now done with this hub action. And now the red player can perform the last action of this operating phase, and they are going to fly with the orange company. They have two orange stock. And we have one. There's only three orange stock out. So that means red is the CEO due to having that majority. And currently, they have by far and away the most money of anyone. With that in mind, they've decided they don't need to take out a full dividend because they have money. They'd rather invest back into the orange company. And this is kind of terrible for us because they are going to go for option four. They're going to increase the number of gates the orange company has by three and increase the tech level by one and not pay out any money in dividends. Again, this is bad for us because we have an orange stock. I was definitely hoping and planning on getting at least $1 for that stock if they did a half dividend payout, but they did a zero. So this stock essentially isn't worth anything to us right now. It's still going to be good to have in the future, though, even though in this moment, I'm not super happy. So three gates will be taken from the reserve. Those will be added up here to the supply. The orange airline was down to three, and now they have six. So the red player decided they didn't mind foregoing a bit of money in the early stages of the game where the dividend payout was quite low for the orange company to get this infrastructure built so that they can increase the income faster and very likely not opt to take no dividends once this token is into the more lucrative sections of the income track. Of course, the other benefit for this action is they increase the technology level by one. So the orange airline is tied with the yellow airline on the tech track. The orange token can be flipped over. And at this point, we are done with the operating phase because everyone has used all of their stock tokens. Now, again, the operating phase ends as soon as everyone has used all of their stock tokens or once players have maxed out on the seven actions they can do within the operating phase. It's possible some people might not be at seven but be out of stocks, while other people have maxed out to seven. And you can actually hold up to 10 stocks at any point in time, which means you can do seven actions and then have up to three stocks that don't have an action associated with them. Of course, that's going to happen later on in the game, not here in the first turn. So our first operating phase is over, and now we can move into the end of turn phase. There are two main steps here, the first of which says each player may purchase one action for the action cost. This happens in player order, and specifically, you can only purchase an extra action if you are the CEO of that company. We have these stocks here, and we are not the CEO of purple or orange, so that means we cannot purchase an extra action for either of those. We are the CEO for the blue airline, though, because we have two compared to the one of the blue player. 
I think let's go ahead and purchase an action so that we can fly the blue company. It has the best income in the game, but we haven't flown it just yet. If you remember from before, we took both of these actions, hoping that the blue player over here would use this action to fly the blue company. They didn't, though. They did something else, essentially putting the onus back on us to spend our money to do this extra action to fly the company because it's just a lot better for us. Essentially, we were hoping the blue player would play ball, and they are not making our lives easy. Now, I did say you have to pay the action cost, and that is specified by the tier of the stock market that the price for that company is currently at. The blue airlines token is in this section here, and those all say an action cost of $2. That means we have to pay two of our personal dollars to the bank in order to perform this action. We have exactly $2, so we can spend this and then perform an action with the blue airline, and it can be any of the actions that we can normally do. Of course, in this case, we are doing this specifically so we can fly the blue airline, so let's go for it. Now, we are the CEO, so we can decide how we want to do this payout. And the blue airline is up here in the $4 per stock full dividend section. We have two blue stocks. That means if we do a full dividend, we would get $8, and we currently have no money at all. I do like the idea of a half payout to increase the technology for blue or doing a half payout to bring in more gates for blue because there's only one blue gate left currently in the supply. But... I think I need money. <laughs> we have no money, so let's do a full dividend payout. Again, this is in the $4 section. So every blue stock is going to pay out $4 from the bank. This means we get $8, although of course we only made $6 because we had to pay $2 to make this action happen. The blue player is very happy to see this happen. They are going to get four money. They had no money, so this is going to definitely help them out. And now we can flip this token over. That's finished our optional bonus action. Now yellow can do one of these. The teal airline has not flown up to this point. Yellow is the only player with a teal stock, and they did pay $4 for it. If they don't fly with the teal company, this will drop down, essentially losing some of the money they invested in it. So they've decided as the CEO of the teal company, they are going to perform an action that's going to cost them $2, which is exactly how much money they have. That brings them down to zero. And then they're going to fly Teal for full dividends. Teal is currently in the $2 per share area, which means Yellow gets $2 back. And functionally, they did not gain or lose any money with this. Although, of course, by flying the Teal company, it won't go backwards on the stock market track. Now, again, that is important because once the game is over, every stock players have will be worth money equal to its current stock price. As these tokens go further up the track, the increment between these goes up. Over here, it's just $1 between, but then up here, it jumps to $2 between, then 3 4 and finally $5. So this is an important thing to keep in mind in the early stages of the game. The less often the token goes backwards, the further forward it's going to be into these very lucrative areas by the end of the game if you still have that stock. It's possible you might liquidate a stock to gain a new one, and I'll explain how that works when we discuss the standard stock phase. So the Teal Airline has flown. At this point, every airline has flown except for pink and red, although red hasn't even been started yet. Well, speaking of the pink airline, Blue is the CEO, and they are going to spend $2 to pay that action cost in order to fly pink. They're going to be greedy just like us. Pink is in the $4 per share dividend area, so they're going to do a full dividend payout, which means they will get $8. And yellow gets four. They're very happy to see that. The pink airline has flown. And finally, the red player can do a bonus action for the orange airline if they want, because they are the CEO. Orange has flown, though, and they don't really feel like spending two of their personal dollars to do another action with orange, so they're going to pass on this optional purchased action. Now that we're done with those purchased actions, we check to see if any airline has not flown. In this case, every airline has, of course, except for red, which has not been started. So nothing happens. But if there had been airlines that did not fly up to this point, then each of those airlines' stock price would go down once. Speaking of a stock market penalty, the next thing to check is this one. Again, these happen during end of turn adjustments, and it says airlines will go down once on the stock market per city serviced with a tech level two colors lower than the airline. In order to better explain this, let's look at the technology track. And specifically, these icons right here show that penalty. Now, the green area is two levels above the white area, which is why this shows white minus one. The orange area is two levels above yellow, which is why that shows yellow minus one. 
Now, specifically, the way this penalty works is if, let's say, the orange airline was in the green area, it would go down one step on the stock market for every city with an orange gate that is still in the white technology level. Each of these airports has a technology level associated with it, and we can upgrade these as we increase our technology using the upgrade action, which we have not seen just yet. I think it's very likely we'll see that happen in the next turn, though. For now, we can see that it's impossible for any of the airlines to be two levels higher than a city because you have to be at least in the green section to make that happen. What this does mean is that increasing your technology does become a bit of a liability as you become strongly incentivized to upgrade the cities with your gates so that you don't suffer these stock market penalties. Again, I'll talk about upgrading the cities soon. At this point, going in turn order, players have the option of cashing in any contracts that they have fulfilled. Now, it doesn't look like we have any. Remember, in order to do this, an airline has to have gates in all of the applicable cities. We got close, but didn't quite complete either of these. We decided to prioritize the income of the blue airline instead. So we pass on this. And in fact, all of our opponents pass. No one completed any of their contracts in this first round. Maybe we should have, because getting a few extra dollars leading into the next stock phase can be important but it doesn't look like that happened. And I'm sure we'll see at least one of these contracts completed by the end of the second turn. Speaking of that, we are now coming to the end of the first turn of the game, so we can move the turn counter over to the two. At this point, if the game is not over, we can do some resetting. Of course, the game ends once we have completed six full turns of the game. Let's actually talk about what happens when the game is over now before we jump back into playing. Now again, once we've completed six full turns, we will move into the final scoring, and the first thing we do for that is every single airline is going to fly again for full payout. So it's almost like there is a small seventh turn where every airline gets that one flight. After that full dividend payout flight, every player is going to take all of the stocks they have in front of them, and they are going to liquidate them according to the stock price for each of those airlines. Once players have gathered up all this money, the player with the most money will be the winner. And if there happens to be a tie, then the players share in the victory. Now, again, that is obviously not happening just yet. We are only going into the second round of the game. And because the game isn't over, now what we have to do is reset all of these income tokens so that the flown side is face down. We also reset the tech tokens to hide the advanced side. After this, every player will move all of their used stocks back to the right side of their boards. And then the starting player token is going to move clockwise once. That means it goes over here to the yellow player. All right, we can move this cube over here to the stock phase at the start of the second turn of the game. Now, as I mentioned, the initial stock phase in the first turn is different from the rest in the game. And now we're going to perform the first standard stock phase. Now, the way this works is in player order going clockwise, everyone has the option of buying one stock or passing. If you buy a stock, then the next person goes and you'll have the opportunity to buy another stock within this phase. But the moment you pass, you are out for the phase. This means the yellow player starts things off. They have $6 and they can buy one stock. The price to buy a stock is listed along the top and with $6, that means they cannot afford to buy either of these green stocks or this purple stock here. The other stocks could be purchased by them though, including red stock. If they bought red stock, they would decide the price. They would then put this token down and then the red company would be online. Well, with $6, that means they can afford this blue stock, and the blue airline currently has the highest income of any in the game at 38 So yeah, they're going to spend their $6 buying this blue stock. Now, as soon as a stock is purchased for a company, we flip the stock token over to show purchased. Now, this only happens the first time a stock is purchased for that company within the phase. If there are more purchases, that won't affect this. And at the end of the stock market phase, every company that had at least one stock purchased is going to advance once. So that means the stock price for blue is going to go up once at the end of this phase because that blue stock was purchased. Of course, the yellow player has to pay for this. That's going to be all of their money. And now the blue player can buy a stock if they want. They have $10 and they've decided to spend six of these in order to purchase this pink stock here. As you can see, that is the third pink stock that they own. And I do want to point out that there are share limits in this game. Specifically, players cannot have more than 10 shares in front of them, and you can never have all shares of a company that are currently out. In addition to that, you can never have more than four shares of a company. The yellow player has a pink stock, so that means the blue player is allowed to take this one. And obviously, they are very much investing in that pink company.
Now, I did just mention that you cannot have more than 10 stocks. However, if you're at 10 stocks, you can purchase another one. And the way that works is you choose a stock you already have and you return it to the stock pool and you pay the difference between the stock you're buying and the stock price of the token you're putting back. Now, you don't get any change from this. That means if you get rid of a stock that is a higher value than the stock you're buying, then you just don't pay anything. You do not gain any money for the difference. Again, that only happens later on in the game once we get to 10 stocks. A pink stock was purchased, so we can flip this over. And now the red player may purchase a stock, and they have $6 available to them. This means they could start the red company, or they could buy a teal stock. They do not have enough money to afford a green or a purple stock. I think they're going to buy a teal stock. Yeah, that's only going to cost them $4, and then this can flip over. That can go here and they have $2 remaining. All right, it's come to us, and we have $8 available. And that does mean that we can afford to buy any of these stocks. Now, if we were to purchase this teal stock, we'd spend $4, leaving us with four more dollars that we could use to maybe invest in the red company, just getting ourselves even more actions. Another option is we could spend seven of our $8 buying a green or a purple stock. We already own one purple stock, so if we bought this one, we would actually become the CEO, having two of it compared to the one of the blue player. Now, the purple airline's income hasn't actually increased up to this point, but that is still not a bad idea. Now, another thing we could do instead of purchasing this teal stock is we could just open the red company at $4, and then that leaves us with four more dollars. So the next time it comes back around to us, we can purchase a second red stock for $4, which means we would be the CEO of that company. Of course, the stock value would be lower, but that feels very tempting, especially considering right now two different players have the teal stock. So if we went in on it, that'd be three out of the four of us having a share in that company. That's a pretty shared incentive there. I think let's go for red. Yeah, we're going to start the red company. We will begin it at $4 and that'll buy us this stock. Of course, a stock was purchased, so we can flip this over and then we can spend $4. That leaves us with $4 left. And now it comes back to yellow, who can take a turn because they bought a stock on their last turn. At this point, though, they have to pass. And that means we can skip them for the rest of this phase, because once you pass, you cannot jump back in for the rest of that stock phase. So play moves over to the blue player and they have $4. Now they were planning on buying a teal stock, but they can see what we are planning on doing. And they like the idea of riding on our coattails. Yeah, they're gonna spend these $4 to buy that red stock. And then play goes to the red player who has just $2. That's not enough for them to buy anything. So they pass, which means we get to go and we can finish our plan. We've got these four dollars. We'll spend that to buy the last red stock and we can put that in front of us. Oops, we're supposed to have this red stock as well. After that, it goes to blue because yellow passed. They have to pass. Red passed so we can skip them and we have no money so we pass as well. This means we are coming to the end of the stock phase and now we can focus over here for the stock phase adjustments. The first of these says each stock will go up once at the end of the phase if at least one stock of that airline was purchased. So blue and pink are both going to be going to the $7 area. Then red and teal will go to the $5 area. After that, if at the end of this phase, an airline has all of its shares in player possession, then it will also increase its stock price by one. Now, specifically, this has to do with the shares in the available pool, not the shares that are over here in the reserve. So essentially, we can look over here and see that all of the companies that are not green, teal, or purple are fully held by players, which means all airlines that are not these three will have their stock prices go up once again. So that is going to be pink, blue, yellow, orange, and red. Well, that's finished the stock phase. But before we move on, I want to talk briefly about bankruptcy. Now, specifically, this is checked during the end of turn adjustments. And if at the end of a turn, an airline is in the one spot over here, then that airline bankrupts. When this happens, all stocks for that company are immediately removed and players do not get compensation for that. Then all gates and hubs for that company are removed from the board. And if a gate is removed, leaving a vacancy, you slide the rest of the gates over and potentially modify the income of those airlines, depending on where they slid to. This is the only way that hubs and gates can be removed from the game. It is possible to move gates around, though, and we'll talk about that when we discuss the relocate action later on in the tutorial. 
All right, the stock phase is done, which means it's now time for the operation phase of the second turn of the game. Yellow gets to start, and they are going to expand with the Teal Airline. Unfortunately for them, Teal is still in the white spot on the technology track, so they can only place one gate down, and they're going to place this gate into New Orleans. That will increase the income of the Teal Airline by 5 plus 0, which means it goes up to 23, not quite enough to reach 26, which would increase its dividend payout. All right, blue can go, and they are going to expand with the green airline. Green is in the yellow section, and that means they can put two gates down, and they can also establish gates in Canada. And they've decided to go into Los Angeles, which will increase that income by six, and Miami, which will also increase the income by six for the green airline. That's an increase of 12, which puts it at 18. Okay, it's now the red player's turn, and they have decided... They're going to perform an action with the yellow airline. Specifically, they're going to research. That means yellow moves up here, and now the yellow airline can put gates down in South America. But they also have a liability. They're going to lose one stock value at the end of the round for every city with one of their gates that is still at the white level. Currently, that is three cities, so that is certainly a liability right now. There is a silver lining, though, with a plus one stock bump when the yellow airline reached the green section of the tech track. So it advances once, and now it's time for us to go. I think let's start off simple and research with the red airline. It was just founded, and its technology is still in the white section. So by doing this, we can now put two gates down instead of one. Oh, this should have been flipped over when that research action happened as well, and we are done. This means the yellow player can go, and they have two stock in the yellow airline. As I mentioned, the yellow airline now has a bit of a liability due to their technology being so advanced compared to many of their gates. They were essentially put into this tough decision by the red player, and yeah, they are going to try and do something about it. They're going to start by performing the first relocate action of the game. Now specifically, this lets them move one or two of their airline gates to new cities on the board, and the overall income for the airline must be the same or higher with this action. So you're not allowed to lower the overall income when you relocate gates. As I mentioned before, the yellow airline is going to be penalized for gates in airports that are the white level at the end of the turn. And one way to get around this is to just leave. They're going to relocate this gate from New Orleans and place it into Buenos Aires. Again, they can go here because their technology level has reached the point that lets them get to South America. So that's one less city liability that the yellow airline has, and we can see the yellow airline went from 8 income to 11. Remember, when reallocating, you have to make sure the income does not go down for the overall company. Now that is after all reallocations have happened, and as I said, with this action, they can relocate another gate if they want to. Now the only other restriction for this involves hubs. If the airline you are relocating has a hub on the board, then you are not allowed to relocate the gate associated with that hub. So that means the pink airline cannot relocate this gate away from Miami because it's essentially locked in by having that hub token there. They've decided they are going to relocate this gate from Los Angeles, and they'll send that to Rio de Janeiro. That had an income of 6, and we can see this is going to be an income bump of 12. Now they're done relocating, and we can see overall that their income has gone down by 14, while going up by 23. The difference there means the yellow airline's income went up by 9. So it's going to go from 24 up to 33. Yellow is at 26 or above. That means they are going to gain a hub into their supply and one stock is going to be placed into the available pool. Now, after gates are relocated, we slide the rest of the gates to the left to fill in spots and income can potentially change. In this case, the green airline's income did not, but the teal airline goes from a plus zero to a plus three. That means the teal company will increase their income by three. So Teal is going to go from 23 up to 26, and that is exactly what it needed to increase its dividend payout and to place another stock into the available pool and to put a hub into the supply for the Teal airline. Now, it's possible the yellow player was orchestrating that from the beginning. They really wanted to get to the next dividend level, and they were able to do that by vacating the spot, essentially shifting three income from the yellow airline into the Teal airline. And it's possible that wasn't actually a good strategic thing for them to do, but they decided to give it a shot. All right, the yellow player is done with their turn, which means the blue player can go, and they are going to perform the first upgrade action of the game. 
They're doing this with the pink company, and specifically that says they can change two cities holding your airline gates to a higher level, and you may pay to put one or two more down. The way this works is we first check to see the technology level of this airline. The pink airline is at the yellow level, and that means with this upgrade action, cities that have pink gates in them can be upgraded to the yellow level. We can see that the pink airline is in Miami, which is at the white level, Boston, which is white, and Toronto, which is yellow already. So obviously that can't be upgraded because it is at the maximum tech level of the pink airline. So they are going to upgrade Miami and Boston, bringing both of them from the white level up to the yellow level. The way they do that is they search through these upgrade tiles and find the appropriate cities and colors, and then place those onto the cities. Let's start with Miami. Now this goes here, and as you can see, that increases the base income for that city. And in fact, on the left, you can see what all of the income increases will be as the city gets upgraded. There was a yellow eight there, which matches this yellow eight. That means if Miami is upgraded all the way to the gray level, which is the highest, then the base income will go all the way up to 14 from the original six. Now, when you upgrade, you do not have to increment. So that means if the pink company was in the orange tech level, for example, they would simply put an orange token down here, jumping this from six to 12. In fact, you are forced to place the highest tech level available to that company onto a city when upgraded. Of course, the highest tech level for pink is yellow, which is the next one up. So when this goes here, that is going to increase the income of these airlines by the difference. That's going to be plus two per gate, which means the green airline is going to increase by two and the pink airline is going to increase by four because remember, this hub essentially counts as a gate for the pink company. So the green airline's income goes up to 20 and the pink airline goes from 33 up to 37. Of course, they are upgrading twice and they're going to put this one over here onto Boston. That also has a difference of plus two and there is just this one pink gate in Boston. So pink is going to increase its income two more times, tying it with the blue airline at 39. All right, blue is done, which means the red player can go and they have decided to fly with the teal airline. Currently, no player is a CEO of the teal airline because the red player has one and yellow has one and nobody else has any. And we can see that currently the teal airline has three gates in its supply. So red can look over here because again, there is no CEO. The first option is not valid and neither is the second because again, there are three gates in the supply. Down here, we check the tech level for the teal company. And specifically, it says if teal is three or more tech levels behind the most advanced, then a half dividend will pay out and teal will increase tech level by one. We can see that Teal is indeed one, two, three behind. So that means Teal is going to move forward once into the one section, and then it is going to half pay. For the full pay, this would give $4 per share. Since this is a half pay, that is going to give $2 per share. So yellow gains $2, and so does the red player. We can flip this over to show that the Teal company has flown, and now it's time for us to go again. I think let's activate the red airline again and expand. And since red is not at the white tech level anymore, we can put two gates down. And of course they are at the yellow level, which means they can build gates into Canada. So let's take the two gates that we're gonna place down. And I like the idea of jumping into some of these cities that just got upgraded. The income is obviously increased for these. And I do want to be explicit that the tech level does not indicate the color of the city that you build into. It specifically tells you what region you can build into. Miami is still in the United States and so is Boston, even though they are at the yellow level. That means if the red company was still in the white section, sure, they'd only put one gate down, but they could still put that gate into Miami or Boston, even though they have a higher tech level. Essentially what this means is that airlines with lower technology can make use of the higher technology of other airlines by putting gates into the updated airports that the higher technology companies made better. Of course, red is at this position. And while I am tempted to go into those upgraded cities, we do also have this contract that says we have to have a gate in New York, Dallas, and Denver with any airline. And the red company starts in Dallas. I think let's just set this one up to be able to complete it at the end of this turn. That means we are going into New York, which increases red's income by seven. And we are also going into... Denver, which only increases by six, that's not a lot, but I like the idea of getting that contract completed. So that is going to be seven plus six. 
which means red is going to go up by 13. And if we had gone into Boston and Miami instead, red would have gone up by 16 instead of 13, and it still would not have reached the next dividend section, which is why I decided we should prioritize getting that contract completed. Now, we don't cash this in until the end of turn phase. Of course, it's possible that some of those gates could be relocated before that happens, but I think that's pretty unlikely to happen for the red airline. Well, the yellow player is next, and they are going to activate the yellow airline again, and they are going to expand. Huh. Interestingly enough, they are going to go back into New Orleans. They relocated away from there, so it looks like they were trying to manipulate things to get the teal airline into that plus three spot. That is going to increase the yellow airline's income by five. And then they're going to go into Phoenix, which is going to increase the income by two. That is nowhere near as good as so many other options out here. So I think they're telegraphing pretty hard that they are gunning after a specific contract in their hand. So it looks like the overall income for yellow is going to go up by seven, which means it will go from 33 up to 40. They are 11 away from increasing the dividend payout even more, and I think even if they had placed their tokens down to gun after income, it seems pretty unlikely they would have gained 11 more than what they just did with this action. Now that's finished their turn, and we can see that all of the yellow stocks have been used. That means the yellow player is either going to be okay with the yellow airline not flying, or they are planning on spending an action later on in this round to fly the yellow company on their dime. It is worth noting that that is going to be more expensive than what we saw before. It will cost $4 to do that, and we'll just have to see if the yellow player thinks that's worth it. Well, yellow is done, which means the blue player can go, and they've decided to expand with the red airline. They're going to add gates into Seattle and San Francisco. That is going to add a total of nine income to the red airline. This brings it from 19 to 28, which means a hub and a stock are going to be added into the supplies. Well, blue is done, so the red player can go, and they are going to expand with the orange airline. There's a ton of gates available to the orange airline, and they want to make use of these by increasing the income as much as possible. They are going to place this gate into Miami, which increases the income by 8, and this one into Boston, which also increases it by 8. So that is plus 16 income for the orange airline. Orange was at 24 which means it's now all the way up here at 40, and that is going to bring a hub and a stock into the supply. Well, red is done, and that means we can go. And I think let's make the red player's life a little bit harder. We are going to use our orange stock, and let's research. Now, I think this is going to be good for us, especially backing our opponent into a corner to get to the point where they feel forced to help us out. And the reason for that is because as the research goes forward, that is going to bring the white city liability online for the orange airline. The orange airline is currently in three white cities. So if they don't change anything about that, the orange stock is going to go down by three, which is obviously something that the red player does not want to have happen. Red does have one orange stock remaining, which they were probably planning on using to fly. It'll be interesting to see if they instead use that to upgrade some cities to lower that liability. If they upgrade cities, then they'd upgrade it into green and we have a vested interest in Chicago in particular being upgraded with that blue gate over there. A big part of this game is about finding specific cities with the right color matching for the stocks that you have to try and leverage benefits on your opponents, making them feel like they need to do things that ultimately help your portfolio. I'm not saying this is the most genius move ever that I'm doing, but I'm hoping it's going to work out for us. Now, of course, this is going to increase the stock price for the orange airline by one, which puts it here just barely still in the $2 activation costs section for the optional extra action at the end of the turn. I was kind of hoping to bump it up there to really make it hurt if the red player decides to do that, but this is fine. Well, we are done, so the yellow player can go, and they are going to use this action to expand with the pink airline. The tech level for this airline is yellow, so they could go to anywhere in the USA or Canada, and they've decided to go to Phoenix, which adds literally zero income, and Kansas City, which is going to add five income. Now, that means the pink income will go up by five total, and this might not seem amazing, but they are leveraging this in particular to try and help their yellow gate out. Specifically, the reason they are doing this is because now with a pink gate here, in the next turn, the yellow player could use that same pink stock to upgrade Phoenix, 
which will increase the income for both of these airlines and essentially leveraging a pink action to help out the company that they care a little bit more about, which is yellow. Now, again, the pink airlines income is going to increase by five, bringing it to 44. Well, yellow is done, which means the blue player can go and they are simply going to research with the pink airline. That will increase it here, which means it's still in the yellow technology area. The red player is next, and they are definitely feeling the squeeze after we upgraded the orange airline to the green level. Yeah, they aren't going to fly. They are going to upgrade. Again, this lets them change two cities holding orange airline gates to a higher level, and you may pay for one or two more. I didn't actually mention how paying for more works last time we saw this, so let's talk about it now. After up to two cities are upgraded, the player can spend their own personal money to upgrade two more cities, and the amount of money that you spend is quite a lot, and it depends on the current tech level of the company. It is going to be $10 to upgrade to yellow, $20 to go to green, $30 to upgrade to orange, and $40 to upgrade to the gray. So if the red player wanted to spend money for more upgrades, since they are in the green section, that would cost $20 per extra city, and they currently have $4. So they're definitely not going to be doing that. So they can perform those upgrades, and remember, they are upgrading to the green level, and they have decided to go with Los Angeles, and this is probably a big reason why the blue player came over here earlier with this green token. They saw that orange was pretty high on the tech track, and they were hoping this would happen, and it looks like it did. Now we can see Los Angeles had its base income double from 6 to 12, which means the orange airline and green airline are both going to have their income increased by 6. This means green is at 26, and that will bring a green hub and stock into the supply. Orange also goes up by 6, bringing them to 46, and then they are also going to upgrade Chicago. That is going to go from 7 to 12, which means each gate will have its income increased by 5. In this case, that means the yellow, blue, and orange airlines all increase their income by 5. Yellow goes to 45, blue goes to 44, and orange is going to go to 51. That is exactly enough for the orange airline to reach the next dividend section, and it will also bring another orange stock into the available pool. We haven't looked over here recently. As you can see, there's quite a few stocks now available for the next stock round. Again, these are coming out because the airlines have been increasing their incomes. Well, red is done, and that means we can go now, and I think let's do the first open action of the game. When we focus in, it says we can upgrade one city and place one airline gate onto that city, either from the stock or by moving it from somewhere else on the board. I want to do this because currently there's just one gate in the supply. Remember, normally when you do an expand action, you can place up to two of these as long as the tech level is above white. That is the case for the blue airline, and it would just be inefficient to do that. So by doing an open action, we can put one of these down and then immediately upgrade that one city. Now, of course, we are angling to complete contracts. We have a plan to complete this one already using the red airline. I think let's aim to finish this one using the blue airline. We set it up largely in the first turn. We can see that there is a blue gate already in New York as well as Washington, but not in Denver. So I think we are going to target Denver. And of course, with this open action, we also upgrade as we place this down. Now, the blue airline is still in the yellow technology area, so that means that we will upgrade Denver from white to yellow, and that will increase the base income by two, which means red and blue will both have their incomes increased by two. Red will go up to 30, and blue will go up to 46. We are the CEO of both red and blue, so I think this was a pretty good turn. At some point, we are hoping to get the technology levels of these companies up into the green section. And by upgrading Denver now, that means these are not going to be a liability once we get there. They will be a liability if we get up to the orange section, but that's a ways away and we can deal with that when it comes. Well, we are done so the yellow player can go. And this is their final action of the operating phase. They must perform an action with the blue airline if there is one available. And they've decided they're simply going to research moving the technology token up once. Well, yellow is done, so the blue player can go, and they've decided they want to upgrade using the blue airline. The blue airline is still in the yellow technology area, and they are going to upgrade New York and Washington. As you can see, New York is going to have its income increased by three, so that is three for blue and three for red. Red will go to 33, and blue will go up to 49, and then for Washington, this is an increase of two for blue and teal. So 
teal will go up to 28 and blue will go from 49 to 51 just barely getting to that next dividend section this is also going to bring a new blue stock out for somebody to potentially purchase in the next stock phase well blue is done so red can go and they must perform an action with the purple airline and they've decided to expand the purple airline is at the yellow level which means it can expand into the u.s as well as canada and they're going to go into Chicago. As you can see, there's a minus three modifier. So that means the income for purple is going to be 12 minus three or nine, which is still a great increase overall. Again, the purple airline can make a gate here, even though it's at the green level, because Chicago is in the United States. They're also going to put this into New York. That is going to increase by 10. So that is 10 plus nine or 19 income increase for the purple airline. Purple was at eight, so that brings it all the way up to 27, and that is going to bring out a purple hub into the supply, as well as a purple stock into the pool. Red is done, which means we can go, and I think let's go ahead and fly with the blue airline. We are the CEO since we have two blue stock compared to the one of yellow and the one of the blue player. And that means we get to decide how this payout is going to work. The blue airline is just barely in the $6 per share full dividend section, which means if we did a half dividend payout, that would be $3 per share. Now, the blue company currently has no gates in the supply. So if we did a full payout, we would get $12 because that would be six plus six with our two blue stock. But going into the next round, the blue company would just be able to place a hub and not put more gates out. And we have to decide if we want more money right now or if we want to invest in the blue company's potential in the future. I think let's go for the future. Let's do a half payout and then bring three more gates from the reserve into the supply. With the half payout, that means each blue stock is going to give $3 to the player who owns it. This means we get $6 because we have two blue stock. And then the blue and yellow players will get $3 for their one blue stock each. The blue airline has flown, so we can flip this over. And now our turn is done, and we can see that the yellow player passes. They don't have any more stocks to use for actions. On the other hand, the blue player does have a stock, and they are going to use this, and they're going to fly with the pink company. They are definitely the CEO of pink. They have three pink stocks compared to the one pink stock owned by the yellow player, and the pink company is currently in this dividend section. Now, there is just one pink gate currently available, and the blue player is pretty tempted to do a full payout. That would be $4 per stock, and again, they have three of them, so that would be $12 that they would get for that. But going into the next round, the pink airline would just have that one gate. Of course, they could do an open action with that, upgrading something and placing it down, and they could also relocate the pink gates, potentially into South America, if they were able to get the pink technology level up once. Of course, speaking of that, they could do a half payout right now and bump that, but they don't think that makes sense. If they did that, the pink airline would certainly lose stock value because it's in a couple white level cities. I think the blue player is going to be greedy. They're going to do a full payout for pink. Again, this is in the $4 per stock section for a full payout, which means that they get $12 for their three pink stock, and the yellow player gets four. The pink airline has flown, and that finishes their turn, which means red could go, but they have no more stocks, and that means we can now do the final turn of this operating phase because this is the last stock anybody has. Now, we do have to perform an action for the purple airline, and it has not flown yet, so I think let's do that. No one is the CEO of the Purple Airline because we have one, and Red has one, and nobody else has any. And we can see that the Purple Airline currently has three gates in their supply. When we look over here, that means the first and second lines are not going to happen. The third line says the tech level will go up once if the Purple Airline is three or more tech levels behind the most advanced airline. But it looks like Purple is only two levels behind the most advanced. So that doesn't happen, and a full dividend is going to pay out for the Purple Airline. The Purple Airlines income is at 27, which is in the $4 per share section of the track. This means the Purple Airline is flying. And then we gain $4, which brings us up to 10 total. And the red player also gets $4. They have $8 total. All right, the operating phase is done, and we can now move into the end of turn phase. Now, each player in order can perform one action for an airline that they are the CEO of. And it's worth noting that the orange, yellow, red, and green companies have all not flown this round yet. 
the yellow player starts, and they are the CEO of the yellow airline, they've decided they are going to spend their personal money to do a fly action. This is pretty expensive for them. That's going to cost $4. So they will spend that. And then they'll do a full dividend payout for the yellow airline. It's in the $4 per share section, which means they will get $8 because they have two shares. And the red player will gain $4 for their one yellow share. The yellow airline has flown. And now the blue player has the option of purchasing an action. The green airline has not flown yet. They've decided they are going to purchase this action. It's just barely going to be $2. It was almost going to be more. So they can spend two, and then they are going to fly with the green airline. There is still a pile of available gates over here for the green airline, so they are certainly not going to take more of those. I think they are just going to do a full dividend payout. They could do a half payout and increase the technology level of the green airline, but they don't think they need to. They only have that one stock, and they figure this is probably the time to squeeze more money out of it. The full payout is going to be $4 per share, and of course this can be flipped over. And they'll get $4 because they have one share. They spent $2 to do this, so overall they are positive $2. The red player is up, and the orange airline has not flown. They feel like we backed them into a corner, but it still makes sense for them. And it's only going to be $2 for them to activate this action. Now, the red player is the CEO, so they can make the decision for this orange flight. And they can see that there are four gates still available in the supply for the orange airline. And orange is currently all the way up here on the tech track. They don't feel the need to push it further. They're going to do a full dividend payout, and they are in the $6 per share section of the track. That means they get $12 for their two orange stocks, and we will get $6 for our one. All right, it's finally come to us. We are the CEO of Red and Blue, and the Red Company has not flown. I think it makes sense for us to spend our money to make this happen. We can see that it's going to cost $2 to activate this action, so we will spend the two. And then as the CEO, we can decide how this is going to pay out. I think we should believe in this red company a little bit. We could do a full payout. We would get eight money total, but let's do a half pay instead. That's going to be $2 per share. That means we'll get $4. And then instead of bumping the tech track, which wouldn't be the worst thing, but red is still fine. Let's bring three more gates into the supply to better help the red airline spread out on the board. So red has flown, and again, with a half pay, that's going to be $2 per share. This means we get $4, and the blue player will get two. All right, that's it for our optional purchased actions. And at this point, if any airline hadn't flown, then that airline's stock price would go down by one. It looks like all of them have flown, though, through a big expenditure of money using those extra purchased actions. Now it's time for us to check the technology penalties. Currently, only yellow and orange could potentially be penalized. Again, what this means is that airlines will lose one stock price for every city with one of their gates that has a technology level two or more behind that airline. This is definitely going to have an impact on some stock prices. The yellow airline is in five cities currently. These two are at green, which is fine. Chicago is green as well, but Phoenix and New Orleans are both white. That means the yellow airline's stock price is going to go down by two. This could be pretty painful later on. It's going to go over there. Then orange checks the same thing, and they were able to stem a lot of the damage with these upgrades here, but they do still have a gate in San Francisco that is going to lower orange's stock price by one. There are two orange stocks in the pool, so that going down is certainly going to be good for the players who end up purchasing those stocks. All right, we're done with penalties, and now players can, in order, play out any contract cards that they have completed and that they want to activate. Yellow says they actually have two they could do, but they are choosing not to do one of them, and they are going to reveal this one. Now, it's likely they are not revealing the other one because it would help a company that they currently don't have stocks in. This one, however, is going to work. As you can see, this can go towards a company that has a gate in Buenos Aires, Phoenix, and New Orleans. In this case, that is going to be the yellow airline. So that means the yellow player, who is the one who revealed this contract, is going to gain $3 from the bank. And then the airline for which this was played to is going to increase its stock price by one. So yellow goes back up to nine. Then this card can be discarded. After this, the blue player has the option of playing contract cards. And interestingly enough, they say that they could do two as well, but they're only going to reveal one. 
This is going to gain them a single dollar. That brings them up to 20 exactly. And then this is applied to a specific airline that matches the routes. And that is going to be red, which is in Dallas, Denver, as well as San Francisco. So the red airlines price is going to go up by one. And I'll just tell you right now, the other contract that they had would work for the blue company and they do have a blue stock. The reason they decided not to bump this is because the blue player is going to have first dibs in buying more stocks in the next stock round, because of course they are next after the yellow player and the blue player is planning on buying that blue stock since the blue airline is currently the most lucrative company out there. And they figured they would rather hold on to that contract contract for one more round so that they can purchase that stock for less money. Again, we're not supposed to actually know that. They're just doing some table talk for us. Now the red player can decide if they want to complete any contracts. And nope, they can't complete any of these. Or <laughs> they choose not to, at least. That's what they tell us. <laughs> Finally, we can reveal any that we want to. And I'm pretty sure we can do both of these. And I think we want to. Yeah, this one works for the red company for which we are the CEO. That needs Dallas, New York, and Denver. And that is the case. And then this other one is going to work for the blue airline, which we are also a CEO of. That needs New York, Washington, and Denver. And we were able to make that happen. So we are going to gain $3 total from these two contracts that we reveal, which brings us to $21 total. And then the blue and red stock prices are both going to go up once because each of them had a contract fulfilled for them. Well, at this point, the game is not over, so we can now move the turn cube over to start the third turn of the game, and then we pass the starting player token clockwise. It'll go over to the blue player, and now we would begin the next turn with a stock phase, but I think this is a good point to stop playing through the game. I am curious, though. We can see that the yellow player currently has $16. We have 21. The red player has 22, and the blue player has 20. So relatively even overall, although there is a disparity in the amount of stocks that various players currently have. Going into the next stock round, obviously there is a bunch of stocks that players could buy. There aren't any more airlines to be started, so these would be the prices available to everyone. The blue airline is the most lucrative, so I'm happy that we are the CEO of it, and it's probably a good thing that it also has the highest stock price. We are also the CEO of the red company, which is tied for the highest stock price. Overall, I think we've been playing a good game. Now, once again, if we were to continue playing the game, it would end after we completed six full rounds. Then after that, every single airline would fly once more, and then every one of our stocks would be liquidated for its stock market price, and then the player with the most money at that point would win the game. Well, I do believe I've covered just about all of the rules to the game, so that's going to bring this tutorial to a close. I hope you enjoyed learning how to play 1930. As always, I'd like to thank everyone who's been supporting this channel, including these producer-level Patreon supporters. If you too would like to directly support the channel in the creation of future videos like this one, then please go to jongetsgames.com support. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button for it down below, as well as the subscribe button for the channel. Thanks for watching.